Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we are tracking PTC4 for potential tropical development into Debbie on its way towards the Gulf of Mexico, crossing Florida, and then brushing across the east coast of the United States, with maybe more to come after that. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin, thanks to TropicalTippets.com for Friday, August 2nd, 2024. The black arrows pointing towards PTC4 now, Potential Tropical Cyclone 4. Basically, it's just a term that the National Hurricane Center gives to a disturbance that has a good chance of developing so it can issue tropical storm or hurricane watches or warnings. Then we have a tropical wave out in the middle of the main development region in purple, with another one in pink coming off the coast of Africa. Here's the vorticity signatures of our two systems that we are tracking, PTC4 over Cuba, tropical wave over the main development region, and then we also see the hurricane out in the eastern Pacific on the left side of your screen. That's what we are going to be looking for as we go forward. And if we see that signature, we're getting closer to a tropical system developing in the Atlantic. Here's that tropical wave that we're monitoring in the middle of the Atlantic. Nothing too crazy with it right now. It's just a patch of thunderstorms with a cluster of energy moving westward. But we'll keep an eye on it because it's got a chance for developing as we go about 7 to 10 days from now. And I'll show you that in this video. The main concern right now is PTC4. As you can see, we have a cluster of thunderstorms circulating and trying to develop a low pressure system, but it is over Cuba right now, so that is hampering its chances for development. But the National Hurricane Center thinks it can become a tropical system very soon, so they designated it PTC4 or Potential Tropical Cyclone 4, so it can start issuing tropical storm watches, as you can see, for the Florida Keys. And, trop and we also have warnings in effect for the southwest coast of Florida, including the Naples region. And you can see that this is the cone of uncertainty where this track can go over the next five days until Wednesday at 2 p.m. off the Carolina coast. That track is based on the spaghetti track guidance models. As you can see, this is where the storm potentially could go based on all the model runs. How strong can it get? At least a tropical storm, potentially, if it, depending on where the exact track it goes, uh, could become a hurricane on some models, and we'll show you that as well. So here's the GFS model, 800 cyclonic vorticity, spin and energy of the atmosphere, black hexagon is PTC4, purple is our tropical wave. Light wind shear for both environments right now protecting their moisture bubbles. So move this forward to two days from now, I mean, tomorrow, Saturday, August 3rd, and we see that PTC4 is now emerging from the northern coastline of Cuba, just south of the Keys of Florida, in the Florida Straits, and that's where it's gonna start bundling its energy and work its way towards developing into a tropical system which it does so 24 hours after that on Sunday the 4th, and it's right just to the west of the Tampa St. Pete region. And we still have our other tropical wave outside of the Caribbean. And we have both with large amounts of moisture to contend with and light wind shear environments. So if we go another day after that, day three, Monday, August 5th, doing a split screen here, you can see how tight that vorticity gets for PTC4. And it's down now to a 998 millibar low pressure system for a tropical storm. But it's going to be very slow moving, as we discussed in a previous video, because of the high pressure uh, and the, the slow steering currents uh, in the mid-levels of the atmosphere, not so much our Bermuda Azores high. Um, so here we have it on day three, here's day four on Tuesday, down to a now a 984 millibar high pressure system, low pressure system I should say, so that's definitely on the border of a hurricane, and then day five on Wednesday, August 7th, 
it's down to a 973. Definitely a hurricane off the southeast coast of the United States around the Carolinas at this point. So this is just one of those models that's saying if it stays over water and it's over very warm water, it's like the Gulf Stream, potentially we could see this develop into a hurricane because we're going to have a upper level ridge over this storm which creates low wind shear and will protect it from any uh, dry air. Now, opposite for our tropical wave in purple in the Caribbean, as you can see, it's got a high wind shear environment through the Eastern Caribbean. So that's causing some dry air intrusion to this developing tropical wave. Now we go to day six and we see that it's pulling away from, PTC4 is gonna be pulling away from the East Coast of the United States, hopefully at this point. And it's still a strong hurricane at a 976 as it goes into the northern Atlantic portions now. Then we get to day seven on Friday, August 6th, a week from today. And PTC4 potentially could be moving into the Atlantic Canada region. And we also have our purple tropical wave now moving into the Western Caribbean. Now, all eyes will likely start focusing on this tropical wave because one PTC4, if it goes based on this model, will be leaving us and be going extra tropical at this point. But we'll have an upper level ridge developing in the Western Caribbean thanks to all that moisture and thunderstorm convection. That's gonna lower the wind shear values that it saw in the Eastern Caribbean, making it more favorable for development protecting that moisture, pulling it up from the Amazon rainforest in South America and Central America, and all that moisture is then going to consolidate potentially into another tropical storm or hurricane as it goes into the Gulf of Mexico based on this model run. This would be 10 days from now on August 12th, Monday. And you can see the millibar pressure is down to a 983 on the GFS model. There's also another tropical wave in pink just outside the Caribbean islands at that point as well. Now that's just one model run. Doesn't say it's gonna happen this way. It's just one possibility out of many. European model, a little bit different. Does develop PTC4 into Debbie, but it takes it because of that high pressure ridge in the middle levels of the atmosphere. Instead of going up the coast very slowly, it, it actually stalls and then turns west into the United States around South Carolina and goes inland. And you can see our other wave on the bottom of your screen, instead of going up into the Gulf of Mexico, is actually going to continue westward towards Central America and Mexico instead. So here's the ensemble models showing all the different possibilities that could play out with both of these tropical waves, plus our pink one right behind uh, the purple one that's coming off the coast of Africa as we speak. And if we go to 10 days time, you can see where these systems could be potentially over land for purple uh, wave over Central America or Southern Mexico or into the Gulf of Mexico like the GFS is suggesting. And then we have our two other waves behind it looking stronger on for development on the European model versus the GFS at the moment. But we saw that with PTC4 first as well. It was bullish, then backed off a little bit. And now the GFS is saying, hey, PTC4 could become a hurricane, whereas the European model is saying, no, it's still just going to be a tropical storm potentially. So still some variations, still a lot to watch out for. We'll continue to monitor the PCT. PTC force uh, development potentially into Debbie and then our tropical wave behind it as it goes into the Caribbean, especially once it's in the Western Caribbean, we'll see what the steering conditions are at that point. Will it develop that upper level ridge and go into the Gulf of Mexico as another tropical storm or hurricane, or will it just continue moving westward and not develop and just bring a ton of rain to Central America and Mexico? As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather, so if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. 
Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button, leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you do and like detail with the breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.